Good evening, I'm Abby Minnick. And I'm Mariana De Jesus. Tonight, we will bring to you an interesting episode of Hempfield Happenings with a special guest later in the show. Here's a sneak peek at some of our stories. What basketball is like in the school program versus a community league. The training behind Hempfield Boys Volleyball's success. And a studio interview with Hempfield's new superintendent, Mr. Bermersky. Stay tuned for this month's edition of Hempfield Happenings. Hempfield Happenings is a student-produced new show from the communications program at Hempfield High School. Today, we have several great news stories that our very own students put together. In last month's show, we discussed different types of safety that is used throughout the community. Riley Klepper investigated on how bus safety operates in the school district. Schools throughout the county are participating in many ways to make a safer environment. One of those ways is by participating in the Operation Safe Stop. Operation Safe Stop is done through PennDOT as an effort to promote public awareness and enforcement laws surrounding school buses. As the Director of Transportation at Hemfield School District, Mr. Derek Frank has experienced the process of Operation Safe Stop. So what it is is a partnership between the school district and participating police departments where the school district helps the police departments identify areas where we struggle with people honoring the safe stop laws and then they target those areas for violators. As a resource officer at Hemfield High School, Officer Timothy Marks has experienced multiple sides of the Operation Safe Stop. If we're doing it that day, we get assigned a school bus, you as the officer are in your patrol car, you're following behind that bus if you have a morning route or an afternoon route, and you're simply just hanging out right behind that bus, hopefully preventing anybody from violating the school bus law, ready to turn around and stop, chase down whoever just blew past that bus with a stop arm. Operation Safe Stop occurs once a year, always in the fall, during sometime during the month of October. The laws following school buses are quite simple. If you see a big yellow school bus and you see those amber lights uh, starting to flash, immediately slow down because once those red lights are on and that stop arm is out and activated, you need to be stopped within 10 feet of that school bus, whether you're facing it or behind it, to ensure that you're not going to run over or injure any student that is trying to get on board that bus or that is leaving that bus. So it's all about awareness. So if you find yourself behind a school bus, remember to stop and be aware. From Hemfield Happenings, I'm Riley Klepper. Project Lead the Way is an American nonprofit organization that is implemented in Hemfield's curriculum. Jace Gibbons discovered how this affects students, teachers, and schedules. The sensors on the front. Oh, wait, Grim. No, 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 no. Grim, wait, good, good. What? Here at Hempfield, the Engineering Department offers Project Lead the Way courses to help further students' engineering prowess. I spoke to one of Hempfield's Project Lead the Way teachers, Dr. Boring. Project Lead the Way is a nonprofit organization that is designed to uh, further educate engineering education within high schools. Taking Project Lead the Way courses will help prepare you to college uh, for college in many ways. It'll introduce you to the rigor of engineering courses. That's what Project Lead the Way is designed to, uh, to introduce that rigor into high schools. Uh, I just had a student return back from Penn State's first year at Penn State and said uh, everything that they learned here in high school 
was reiterated in his first year of college. Current high school students are already feeling more prepared from Project Lead the Way classes. Um, I really like how well the Project Lead the Way classes prepare you for college, especially because I want to be a mechanical engineer. So I think it's really preparing me well. Upon completing uh, your Project Lead the Way course, if you scored at least an 85% uh, in the course, you have your teacher's recommendation and score a high enough uh, on the final exam, you can apply for credit, uh, college credit through Rochester Institute of Technology. Each one of our five Project Lead the Way courses can be transferred or applied for credit uh, and can receive three college credits. So far I've gotten six college cre credits from Project Lead the Way. I have taken Principles of Engineering, Intro to Engineering, and I'm taking Computer Integrated Manufacturing next semester. Organizations like Project Lead the Way are helping high school students take the next steps to college and the careers to follow. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Jace Gibbons. Sports are widely common extracurricular activities to take part in, but what's the difference between club sports and school-supported sport programs? Zach Rota went to talk to some students who are involved in these diverse hobbies. Club ball or school ball? Which truly is the better option? The Hemfield Youth Association's Recreational Basketball League provides an alternative way for kids to play the game of basketball rather than the traditional school team route. Will Eister, a current HYA player, explain how he finds the league to be beneficial. I chose it because it's a more loose schedule and it's a lot more fun to play around with friends and have your friends come and watch it as well. School is year long, so you might not be able to make everything like for the requirements they make you. If you're going to HYA, there's not nearly the demand on your time, the sacrifice. Uh, it's an opportunity to exercise, be part of a team and maybe only play two nights a week. You may only have, you know, eight, ten guys on and you alternate in and out and, and people may get equal playing time. School team ball brings out a side to sports that athletes sometimes struggle with. It puts more pressure on you because you need a good record to make the playoffs and you want to make the playoffs every year. So I feel like that's a lot of pressure. On the contrary, some players are seeking a more extensive basketball experience that requires a lot more dedication. This is where the school team comes in. We're talking about six days a week, uh, it's a demand, sacrifice on your, the players' time, the coaches' time, the parents, family. Uh, it's quite a commitment. School ball provides a much more intense and faster paced experience than club ball. Hemfield basketball player Dylan Mellinger expanded upon the matter. The difference is like the intensity of games and like it's just so much more serious than like than HY. HY you can just pick up and play. It's basically pick up and play and you have practices like two days a week and it's a game. So I rather have more practices so I can get better on my game and have more games. It takes a special individual to understand the, the commitment and the sacrifice and how to be part of something bigger than yourself, meaning uh, uh, to be a good teammate and understand your role. They're going to have life to, lifelong memories, and it's not just about the games, it's the practices, it's the team meals, it's the bus rides, uh, it, it's, it's the friendships. And uh, at the end of the day, that, that's what it's all about, and developing those relationships and being able to carry them on into your adult life. Whether a player decides to go out for the school team or take an alternative path and play club ball, they will still benefit from playing the game they love. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Zach Rhoda. Club sports and school sports may have their differences, but they both have one thing in common, teamwork. Lauren Egger went to talk to the Hemfield boys volleyball team to learn how being close aided in their success. Hemfield School District has a very tight-knit boys volleyball team which allows them to obtain many victories. Other team sports can be really spread out but this is a very team-oriented sport. Everybody has to be on the same page like the setter with the hitters and the passers like everyone needs to be communicating constantly like relationship outside wise I think we're all very close. More like a brotherhood than anything else. Um, we spend so much time together and we all know each other's habits and quirks and funny personality traits. I, I try to keep it fun. 
it, I want them to come to practice. They enjoy coming to practice. I rarely have an issue with somebody missing practice. Our practices are fun. Do we work hard at practice? Yes, we do. And half the time I got to tell them to stop. We got to stop practicing because they want to keep going when it gets real, real competitive. A very good system where we reduce our errors as much as possible and we allow other teams to beat themselves and we just don't beat ourselves. The most important part of the game is passing and serving. The fans think it's, it's the hitting and the blocking, but the, but the serve and the, and the passing of the game is the most important part of the game. The relationship of the players and the coaching of this team has helped them to win 22 league titles, 14 district titles, and 10 state titles. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Lauren Egger. With the new year starting up, it's only right to create some goals to help ourselves improve, whether it's going to the gym every day or to get better grades. Students and staff told me what their New Year's resolutions are. My New Year's resolution is to write a bit more poetry. I've been getting really into that lately and I want to be able to have a nice little collection. My New Year's resolution is to be nicer to my friend Mr. Hindi next door. Definitely be nicer to Mr. Paradise. To uh, convince Chick-fil-A to be open on Sunday so I can eat more chicken. What is your New Year's resolution? Do you not have one? To set aside more time to spend with my friends and family. Hemfield Band starts in elementary school. Frank Russo explains how students continue performing all the way to high school. Hemfield's band program is recognized as one of the best in the state. But this success doesn't come without many years of hard work. So let's take it back to where it all started. Elementary school. Mrs. Sherry Ober is the band teacher at Mountville and Roarstown Elementary. Mrs. Kelly Gumbel teaches at Centerville, Farmdale, Landisville, and East P Elementary. So at Hemfield, our elementary band program is in two parts. We start in fourth grade with our beginning band, and then we have a combined fifth and sixth grade intermediate level band. Um, both groups meet one 30-minute rehearsal per six-day cycle. And then all of the students receive a 30-minute lesson, which is a pull-out lesson. So they leave class for 30 minutes, they come down for a lesson that's specific to their instrument, and then they go back to class. The beginner band mainly focuses on how to play their instruments, while the intermediate band works on musical concepts as a group. We try really hard at this level to instill the values of hard work and focus and teamwork because uh, our program does not work on an individual basis. Everything is about the full group. Every member on stage contributes equally. Uh, every member on stage is responsible for preparing their music and preparing for rehearsal. And we really function as a full team. The practices all lead up to the concerts the students perform throughout the year. Our job at the elementary level is to just get comfortable with the instrument and start to learn different techniques uh, and start to learn different musical concepts that then they can just kind of carry that progress in through middle school and into high school. The middle school bands are conducted by Mr. McCaskey. The band meets once every six day cycle. The band director, Mr. Saracini, goes down to the middle school to help the students in sections. This helps prepare the students for ninth grade band. At Hempfield, we have two middle schools, so the students are, while they're getting the same material, the same education, they might be coming from slightly different places, slightly different environments, and it's a chance for us to put all of the students together and kind of get them settled into the way we do things at the high school, how we rehearse at the high school, the way we're going to talk about terminology and things like that, and it kind of gives them a year to adjust. They make an incredible amount of progress from the first day when they're not even used to playing with each other. Um, they're still learning about how to breathe, how to make tone production, things like that. And by the end of the year, the progress they make is so dramatic. Being involved in band provides the opportunity of jazz band, marching band, and auditioning for district band. District band is a chance for Henfield students and all schools in the District 7 area to make it in a selective group of outstanding musicians. Eighth graders usually don't audition, but Jonah Gelbart auditioned and made district band. Yeah, you, you get the music the day of the audition, and you rehearse all the way up until the three-day event, rehearses a band, and then the concert. Most of the district band consists of upperclassmen, 
At Henfield, these students are in symphonic band. Of course, in the marking period, we'll work on the music and kind of prepare it for the concert. Um, in addition to that, we're also spending time building skills. So we do a lot of playing scales, playing long tones, singing, learning music theory, things like that. And then as we get closer to a concert, we do a little less of that and a little more concert preparation. And then we go out and have an awesome concert. So Hempfield has a really strong band program and a good tradition of a strong band program. Uh, students who are here who are performing in symphonic band for three years are typically going to be playing at a pretty high level and are probably going to be able to play in most college ensembles. Henfield's band program is comprehensive from beginning to end. For Henfield Happenings, I'm Frank Russo. Kenny and the Extraordinary Bakers give kids with special needs a chance to bake. Casey Crowder explains how the program works. Every Monday, the Grace Baptist Church comes to life thanks to an organization that supports a great cause called Kenny and the Extraordinary Bakers. Kenny and the Extraordinary Bakers is an organization that has been baking cupcakes to give to local charities for nearly four years. Joelle Ketchum, the founder of the organization, explains the significance of its namesake, Kenny. Kenny is my son, okay. and when he graduated from high school, he did not go into a day program, so we wanted to provide something else for him. So. He had helped Kristen, who has been with him for seven years as his one-on-one, -on -one, different times bake cupcakes. So we decided, why don't we start doing it and provide cupcakes for different organizations in the community. Following the sentiments of Mrs. Ketchum, the kids themselves find plenty of enjoyment in the process while also understanding the significance of their work. I enjoy decorating the rabbits and the gummy worms and the M&Ms and the pumpkins on the cupcakes. <laughs> and and put them on the cup holders. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. What about you, Steph? Um, same thing, but just getting to be with different people. Just getting to be with different people is amazing. So this is a, a yeah, yeah, it's amazing to be part of this organization. Mrs. Ketchum explains the significance of focusing on the baking of cupcakes. Because you can do a lot with them flavor-wise. You can decorate them. You can make them look fun and make them taste really good. And we deliver to hospice, so it's one of those things that it's a comfort food. So it's just a nice, easy thing for everyone to do. Ultimately, the club's goal is to allow people, both with and without special needs, a chance to give back to their community through the baking of these foods. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Casey Kreider. We've had quite a few new administrators join us on the show to talk about their positions. Tonight, we have Mr. Bermisky, who is the new superintendent for grades K through 12. Riley Klepper asked him some questions on what he plans to do as a new superintendent. Hello, I'm Riley. I'm here with the current acting superintendent, Mr. Bermersky. Good afternoon. Hi, Riley. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you doing today? Doing well, thank you. Good. So I was just wondering, what drove you to pursue a career in education? Well, I actually kind of knew early on uh, that I wanted to be an elementary teacher, uh, partly because of my first grade teacher, uh, Ms. Dampman. Um, and she, I had an experience where uh, it was a medical emergency, and, and she was there and, and took care of me, uh, and wanted to, you know, based on that experience, wanted to be able to give back, and had the opportunity to work with her. Um, in high school, uh, going to see her in her classroom and learn from her as to what it means to be a teacher. And um, that really confirmed for me that that's what I wanted to do. And so I pursued the career in education. So what about Hemfield first appealed to you? And what do you hope to gain from your time at Hemfield? Sure. Um, when I first looked to come to Hemfield, um, I was the assistant uh, to the superintendent for elementary education in the Manheim Township School District. And um, when the opening came out as the K-12 to assistant superintendent, it was an experience for me or an opportunity to, to not only gain more experience, uh, but work for a larger school system and, um, and a larger team. Um, but gaining that K-12 to perspective is a critical piece, uh, in my opinion, uh, as I looked you know, for a future role as a superintendent, wanting to have that background and experience. Uh, and so when I came to Hempfield, one of the first things that I saw and felt right away was uh, the great pride uh, that is evident in the community and our staff and our students for the district. And, um, and that's pretty unique for our school district. And so my hope is that we can continue to build on that pride and the tradition and really work to make sure that um, students in the district know that we care about them, 
uh, that they're valued and, and that they have a place here in the district and that there's tremendous opportunities for them uh, to pursue whatever pathway they wish to uh, pursue after high school. Great. And you had mentioned that you previously worked at the Mannheim Township? Mm -hmm, that's correct. So were there any other positions that you held at Hempfield and bef at other districts before you came here? Sure, I actually started my career in the Central Bucks School District. Uh, I taught first and third grade. Uh, in that district. I uh, moved out here uh, with my wife and my family and started teaching extended day kindergarten uh, in the Mannheim Township School District. Uh, moved up to an assistant principal and then building principal and then to the district office roles uh, prior to coming here at Hempfield. So this time of year the weather can cause a couple difficulties. Yes, it can. Um, is there, what do you plan to do to handle these difficulties? Sure, well first um, it's my hope that we'll have really sunny warm winter days <laughs> uh, so we won't have to worry about snow calls. Um, but knowing that's probably not the reality, um, we do the best we can with the information we have at the time. Um, typically uh, on days where they're calling for um, snow or inclement weather, uh, I'll be up between you know, 4 or 4.30 in the morning um, watching radar, um, watching the news, um, checking in with regards to um, people in the district, members of our team, as well as the bus company, uh, to kind of get a sense of how the roads are, um, wanting to make sure that you know, our students are safe if we have to have them come in. Um, and we'll make the call by 545 um, on a given day, partly because our buses need to get rolling and pick up students. Um, so again, you know, we do the best we can with the information we have, uh, but we rely on a lot of people to contribute to that information. Uh, but we'll also do the best we can to, to look out for the safety of our students and staff. Awesome. So what are your plans for Hempfield and what do you personally expect to gain from Hempfield? Sure. Uh, my plans uh, early on in uh, starting off as superintendent will be to roll out our district's new comprehensive plan. Uh, we're really excited about uh, what's coming in the four different goal areas. Uh, most importantly, we're excited for the fact that it will encompass not only working with our students but our staff um, and, and community. And personally, you know, I hope to gain the fact that um, we get working to get to know students and staff and, and being visible in our community. Uh, we're a large district, uh, so it's important to me to, to be as visible as I can, not only in the schools but at different events. Uh, and most importantly, I want students, as I shared earlier, you know, to feel that you know, this is a place for them, that they belong here, we care about them, and we want them to be successful. So I want students to find their passion and us to have the opportunities to help them be successful. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to sit down and talk with me. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Mm -hmm. AP classes are higher weighted classes students can choose to take at Hempfield High School. Ben Marine has discovered what they are like. Directions is given. Ask questions if you do not understand the directions. Read each question carefully, especially multiple choice. According to the College Board, 37.7% of high school students from the most recent graduating class have taken at least one advanced placement or AP course. That's up from 23.9% as recently as 2007. Organisms that survive, those are adaptations. One of the many advantages to taking AP classes is to be better prepared for college. I do think it's important for the students to take AP classes simply because it gives them an idea as to what they're going to have to face in college. It also makes them more prepared to handle the rigorous curriculum at the universities. They really prepare you for college from what I've heard. People who take AP tend to do better and feel more prepared for college classes that they take. Another advantage to taking AP classes is earning college credit without paying the college price. I'm taking most of these AP classes to get out of college, get out of the college courses and get credit for them to save myself and my parents a lot of money. You can get college credit for $100 for paying for the test, whereas it could cost a couple thousand out of college. It's a lot of money to pay for classes after high school when it's pretty cheap to take the test, and if I do well on it, then I can get a free credit in college later on and don't have to worry about that money. Though their reasons may be different, many students around the country have begun taking AP classes. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Ben Marinas. Twins can have very different personalities, like most siblings do. Ava Keller, sister to twins, followed them around, exploring their different lives. There are many families around the world with more than one child. Some of these families have two children born on the same birthday, otherwise known as twins. I read in a magazine well, after I had the twins that a lot of times they, there's some people that would treat their twins the same and that not to do that because a lot of times it, there's resentment. And so I didn't. I never called them twins. I never um, treated them any differently. They were just 
just two boys. She did treat us differently, but not in a bad way. She made us feel like we were our own individuals, and she didn't make us feel like we were clones of ourselves. The Keller brothers are both freshmen. What's unique about them, however, is that although they look very alike in the common eye, they attend two completely different schools and lead two very different lives. So I go to public school and my twin goes to homeschool, so that's a big difference. I used to be homeschooled, but I decided to go over to public school because it's just something I wanted to try. Okay, so Colin's a spaz, um, and I'm a lot calmer than he is. He has slight differences, but most of the time we like the same things, we do the same things, we draw even though we both have very different art styles. We both like to play video games. The Davidson sisters are twins who both go to Hemfield as juniors. They had a few things to say about being a twin. I think with identical twins, if you look the same, people think you're like the same person. Like they act like you have the same personality, same group of friends, like same style, same everything. And that's just not at all how it is. There can be like a lot of struggles being a twin, but there's also like a lot of benefits and I think that's one of the blessings of being a twin. Twin siblings can look either similar or different, but no matter what they look like on the outside, each of them have their own set of skills, unique hobbies, and a distinct personality. From Hanfield Happenings. I'm Ava Keller. You happy now? It is possible that students along with teachers are unaware about Hanfield's policy on overdue fines and fees. Lance Kim explains the district's policy. Should libraries be charging fines and fees towards overdue books and materials? I recently spoke to Dr. Kathy Furman, Hempfield's Library Department Supervisor, to discuss Hempfield's policies on these matters. Um, we're currently not charging middle school students. We do charge at the high school um, because most public libraries, in fact all public libraries in the state as well as college libraries, all charge for overdue books. In 2017, the Library Journal conducted a survey which determined that approximately 92% of the libraries studied charged fines for overdue materials. An average of over $5,000 were made monthly from these institutions through fines and fees. Dr. Furman explains how this money is utilized. We use all of our fine money and all of our lost book money to replace books in the library. So at the end of the year, we take all that money and we do purchase additional material for the library. Students gave their opinions on the matter. I think that libraries should charge fines because that gives you an incentive to bring your books back on time. And if not, then what's to keep you from not keeping the books all the time? I don't think that libraries should have taxes because it can discourage people who may not be able to pay it from taking the book because they're too afraid of not being able to get it back in time. As a majority of libraries continue to charge fees towards overdue books, these institutions are continually working on making these processes more intuitive towards those checking out material. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Lance Kim. That's all we have for this episode. Join us next month from the campus of Penn State University State College. This has been Hemfield Happenings, and thanks for watching.